currently a sumo deadlifter, competition deadlifter, but I started as a conventional deadlifter. So I'll talk about both. Uh, first, the lesser of the two, the conventional. Um, we, for both, um, again, we'll go through warm-up setup and execution. Um, sumo deadlift, you'll open your hips up more. Uh, by the time you're two deadlifts in a competition, you'll have been warm. You might be a little tired. Um, biggest thing, regardless of your stance, is keeping your shoulders uh, well, keeping your lats tight. So again, I'll do um, some of those lat activation uh, warm-ups, especially if we don't have a pull-up bar, but I'll do pull-ups. And the way I do that is I'll warm up with the bar, I'll get warm up with the bar, and then um, take my, I'll usually put 135 to 225, and then I'll start <coughs> uh, taking smaller jumps. Um, on those first few warm-ups, I'll do three pull-ups, and that's still a negative in between those. I don't really want to do pull-ups when I have 70% on the barbell, so I'll do maybe three rounds of like two pull-ups and then a slow negative, and three pull-ups and a slow negative. Um, so don't tire yourself out with those pull-ups, but those are key to staying tight, keeping the barbell close, um, and keeping your upper back tight so you're not rounding your upper back. Um, last is the biggest thing uh, for the deadlift, I think. Um, for sumo, of course, you do some more hip openers, especially if you're coming in for a training session, you're coming a little cold. Uh, I'll do the same thing. A lot of times for sumo, I'll hold the barbell and kind of like move around, do more like a runner style lunge, lunge and like more hip openers there. Um, okay, setup. For conventional, um, we're having our demo girl Kat here. Um, she's gonna set up close to the barbell She's not going to be touching the barbell and knocking it with her shins. Um, best thing for conventional is to set up to where your laces are under the barbell. Um, because when she goes to meet the barbell, her shins are going to sort of run into it anyway. Um, so you don't want to set up right on the barbell. Uh, with setup for deadlift, people like to get so jacked up for deadlift, right? <laughs> and then you come in and it's like, I've done this before. You come in and it's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do it. And then the barbell is out here. Um, take your time. Like deadlift, yeah, it's probably the most weight on the bar that you've done all day. It's the last lift. Third one, you're getting pumped. But um, it's still, same as any other lift, your, uh, it's maybe a more barbaric lift, I think. But take your time, uh, especially you don't wanna screw up your set. Um, so Kat's going to set up in the conventional um, stance. Her feet are close together, right under her hips. Probably the biggest thing that I see is people start with their conventional too wide. Uh, and maybe you might even see, I think I saw somebody's videos, and they uh, start a little wider, and they start pulling, and their knees come in. So if that's something that you experience, uh, maybe just try it a little bit uh, closer together. It, it usually <laughs> should be what your natural jumping position is, whatever that athletic position is, so that you can do um, the highest like vertical jump. Um, so her feet are right under her hips, um, and she wants to, uh, obviously she's picking up the barbell with her hands, so um, her hands are gonna be right uh, parallel to um, her shoulders, so they're gonna be just where they naturally fall. Um, and she's gonna go meet, the barbell, and the most important thing with both sumo and conventional is her hip position and her shoulder or like upper body head position. Um, so Kat's gonna kind of pump down into her start position. Um, and it's not like, this is like a 400 pound barbell, so like, uh, I'm gonna make it a look <laughs> so, so one thing that we want to do before she picks it up is focus on her head position and the easiest way to do that to keep a neutral is fine is uh, find a point on the floor where your eye gaze meets. Uh, usually it's like four feet in front of her uh, and this is so that she's keeping her head neutral and everything's in a strong, stable, neutral position. Um, so the best way to do that is find a spot on the floor, find your gaze, Usually there's a little crumb on the floor or something that you can stare at. Um, and, 
And uh, then before she starts pulling on the bar, she's going to think about putting her lats in her pocket or packing her lats <coughs> strong. Um, I was showing some of you guys this in the bench press. I think you can use it for every lift. Um, to put your lats in your pocket, uh, like right here in your upper pocket, <laughs> your holsters. Um, you can think about taking your shoulders if you can't feel your lats. Does anybody have trouble feeling their lats? Like, it's going to be forever, uh, to be forever to figure out that I had lats. I didn't even know what they were. Um, so one thing that you can do is take your shoulders and uh, shrug your shoulders. Put them back, and then put them down in the pocket, right? So a lot of us have our pre-deadlift ritual, and mine is this, right? And people think that looks so stupid, and I do too, but that's how I feel my lats in my pocket, and that's how I pack my lats in. So I want to keep those packed so that I'm, one, keeping the barbell close, and also um, keeping my upper back tight. So she's going to think about packing her lats before she meets the barbell. Uh, and then she's going to start executing the lift. So um, first thing, especially now that this is so light, uh, Kat is going to pull herself into her start position. And if you hear, she's going to, yeah, you hear that? You hear that? Um, she's pulling a slack out of the bar. Uh, and that's like some people say, uh, hear the click, and then you initiate the pull. So I like to pull myself into my start position, and I hear the click as I'm pulling myself in, and I'm like, okay, slacks out of the barbell, and then pull. Um, so <laughs> that's to avoid uh, tugging, and then uh, when you're initiating the pull, you don't want, you want the slack to already be out, so that when you're pulling, you're pulling the weight off the floor. Um, so she wants to pull the slack out, and then she's gonna think, I'm gonna pull my feet, or I'm gonna push my feet through the floor. Kind of like a leg press. Um, so that's how she's going to initiate her hamstrings and glutes to pull the barbell up. And she's going to keep it close. And then once the barbell um, passes her knees, she's going to think hips and fully uh, stand erect. And that's the conventional deadlift. Um, do any conventional lifters have questions? Cool. Uh, yeah. Um, rounding of backs. So a lot of people do it. I know I'm one of them. Like, is it maybe your leg strength isn't as uh, great as your back strength? Or, like, is it just, I don't know, mobility? Like, what do you think? How so, do you avoid that? So a lot of lifters experience it, right? Uh, and sometimes uh, it'll look like my back is uh, rounding. Um, the biggest thing you want to look for is you want to make sure that you're not pulling on the bar and your position here, when it's just off the uh, floor, is different than here. Uh, I'll pull the bar, and I'm naturally a little bit rounded, especially when there's over 300 pounds on the bar. Uh, I'll pull and maybe be here, and I end here. Uh, now, when you see someone, and they're pulling, and they look great, and then they start to round, that's when you want to keep an eye on it. Uh, I think a little bit of upper back roundness is not the worst thing that could happen to you. Lower back roundness, I think, is a little bit different. Uh, I think then you want to take it a little bit, focus on fixing that and improving some back strength. Uh, but yeah, once it gets heavy enough for you, uh, you might experience that. Um, of course, we want to avoid it at all costs, and we never want to be training volume sessions with a rounded back the entire time. Uh, that's why we train with high volume. Um, we use whatever we can to, like, overload uh, and make it so that we're fixing those issues. Um, yeah, if you're experiencing a, a little bit and slightly, um, I think it's not a tragedy, but if you're super rounded, uh, we need to fix it. Um, yeah, because I, I just started to know that this year, so I like come from the conventional world, and I, find, I found that um, a lot of people, and like myself included early on, like you use like mostly your upper back and like none of your lower body. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a lot of times why people round because they're just pulling, they're just pulling, like, pulling with their back and they're like losing, losing any power from your hamstrings, right? right. So something I started doing with my setup is actually <coughs> activating my hamstrings. I like to do this little movement. So I'm like tensing these muscles so I know that when I'm 
coming up, I'm like actually using them to pull, to like get them off the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, totally. Um, yeah, and with, the, with both deadlifts, you want to make sure that your hip and head angle, that your back angle, and your hip, your start position is making it so that you're pulling with your legs and your lower body. Uh, right? Like, I can lift this up like this, no problem. Uh, but if I want to deadlift it, I want to get in this position. So, uh, obviously, I'm even getting into like a sumo stance or a sumo <laughs> position right here. Um, but yeah, you want to, it's a lower body movement and it's a back movement, but you don't want to be using just one or the other. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Is there something about different people's anatomy that makes one person a better sumo than conventional, one person a better conventional than sumo? Um, I think it can. Uh, usually, um, when you get super tall people, they're usually better conventional. And when you get super short people, they're usually better conventional. And I think it's more common in those like smaller weight classes to super heavies. Uh, usually you see conventional lifters there. A lot of us uh, here probably, um, it's more common to see more sumo pullers um, with like the weight classes that are probably here. Um, so I think yeah, it has something to do with it. I think your preferred lift should be your best lift. It should be the lift that you feel most comfortable with and the lift that you have most fun with. Uh, I can't recover um, from conventional pooling as quickly as I can from sumo pooling and as I did that lift, so that's why I pull sumo. And also it's just my better, a stronger lift, so that's why I do it in competition. So you, those are some things to factor in to figure out what is the best pull for you. I think it's good to experiment with both. Um, for a lot of people who are experiencing like lower back pain or injury or just soreness, uh, for me it was like, not pain, it was just soreness to where I couldn't even bench the next day. Um, that's why I made the switch to sumo. So it, it's, sorry, it's not a straightforward answer, but those are the patterns I can see like across weight classes though. Cool. Sumo? Uh, okay, sumo deadlift. Um, she's going to approach the bar. If the uh, approach and execution is very similar. The difference between the two is obviously the stance. Um, hip position for Kat is going to be a little bit lower in the sumo, and her back is going to be more upright. Um, so for both deadlifts, you want to make sure that your shoulders are right over the barbell. So when you're pulling the slack out and hearing the click, um, I like to pull myself into that start position. So I like to pull myself so that my hips are at my start position and then my shoulders are right over the barbell. Then I know I'm ready to pull. Um, so same thing. Only thing with the sumo is to accelerate the barbell is once you, and this is, could uh, be for conventional, one cue that you can think about is once the barbell passes your knees, you're going to squeeze your butt, and that's when we'll hear hips, 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 Megan, hips. Yeah. Ryan will be yelling like a crazy person. <laughs> um, you, will, you will see, uh, that's when I know, oh, okay, barbell's pass, knees, hips, and I want to squeeze my butt and thrust my hips forward. Same with a conventional, you can do the same thing. Bar hits your knees, thrust forward. Um, you want to be, the deadlift is mostly, is usually the heaviest lift that you'll have, like I said. So you want to be accelerating on the barbell. Um, really focus on being explosive. You're going to be ex trying to be explosive off the floor, even though a lot of us will be super slow off the floor, um, and then try to accelerate. Um, yeah, I think that's really worth mentioning between the difference. Oh, yeah, yeah slow off the floor versus. Right, right, right. So sumo floors tend to be a little bit more slow off the floor. Um, and I definitely experienced that. Uh, if you've ever seen any of my videos, I'm working on fixing a couple things. Uh, fixing my starting with higher hips. So you'll see some sumo pullers will start with super low hips and meet the barbell there. I'm working on having a little bit higher of a hip position. Uh, I think that'll get me faster off the floor. Uh, not the solution for everyone, but I think I tend to uh, get into this start position and I don't actually start pulling the weight until I'm here. So if you ever see your videos and you're like, oh shit, I'm pulling on the barbell for like 10 minutes before it actually leaves the floor, uh, it could, the answer could be a higher start position at your hip, or 
It could be uh, you're just weak and slow on the floor. Uh, so <laughs> maybe you need to work in some deficits uh, and do some uh, assistance work there. Which naturally, though, like sumo, you're going to be slower versus conventional. That was a weird thing changing for me. Honestly. Right. Yeah. You watched me like totally exactly. bail on the lift. You're like, just keep going, just keep pulling. Because yeah, conventional, I'm used to it just sh like coming off the floor, and sumo it takes a sec. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so if, if anybody wants to like try one or the other and like switch today, uh, you're welcome to do that. Um, yeah. So whenever, because I've been in a few situations now, people are screaming hips to me, and I'm not really sure what that means. Yeah. So, so you blocked your knees and then just drove your hips forward. Is that? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like, I don't know what they mean. What they mean <laughs> there? What they mean there is uh, you're probably pulling, and then you're like, okay, let's just keep pulling the bar up, right? Yeah. Uh, sometimes you need to cue yourself. Uh, like sometimes the, uh, the, the thing isn't enough of a cue. <laughs> so what they mean is uh, to open your hips. That means like push your butt, squeeze your butt, and push your hips from here to here. Okay. So you're gonna turn these on and use your glutes to lift that barbell up. Um, yeah, sometimes like little cues like that, it's good to understand what they mean. Yeah. Uh, but also it's like, um, I could say like, oh, stand. Like, that would be great if you could do that. Um, so, so yeah, thinking of like, oh, thrusting my hips. Yeah. And uh, while you're warming up, you can even while the bar is wide enough, you can even think like, okay. Because your hips aren't moving forward prior to that. Right. It's mostly your they're they're back because I'm in, I'm trying to get the bar past my knees. Yeah. So if my hips were to move forward here. I would be like, no. <laughs> so, so yeah, I need the bar to pass my knees, and then I can open up okay. to stand. Yes. Um, other than that, like, there are plenty of similarities between the two. Um, you'll see some people, and they will do a sumo deadlift, or no, they will do a conventional Huh, what a <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The sumo stance. Yeah. yeah. They will do a conventional deadlift with a sumo stance. So you have to keep in mind that the hip angle is different. And what I mean by that is uh this is what a conventional if I can even do it. Uh, this would be a that would be a conventional yeah. deadlift in a wide stance. Right? So my we'll get my hip angle. Okay, now whereas thus. Uh, so we'll take a look at like your head position and your hip position and your back angle uh, and make sure that everything looks good. Um, yeah, I think that's a good overview of the deadlift. Yeah. Anything on lockout? Um, lockout. So opening your hips um, and thinking hips and squeezing your glutes mm -hmm. will probably be the biggest thing. Um, weak point training is important. We talked about weak point training off the floor, so you can use deficits. Um, lockout, you can also do some other assistance, like you can use bands on the floor mm -hmm. um, to make the lockout harder, so you train that. Um, lockout. Uh, rack pulls. You can do rack pulls to work on that range of motion. Mm -hmm. I tend to think that bands might be better because you're still pulling from the floor, uh, but you're making it harder for yourself. Whereas rack pulls, like for me, once the range of motion is short enough, I'm like, oh, my scares. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, especially getting started, it's good to. Uh, I think that uh, maybe training with some bands if you can in your gym, it is good to uh, hmm. get the full range of motion. Also, like uh, dial in your start position and everything. Yeah. Do you tell you some in? Like, do you tell it under the grip when you? Uh, like a hook grip? Yeah. Uh, no. Not even at the end. Uh, no. Uh, so I'll use a mixed grip. There's a couple different ways you can grab the barbell. You can do a mix to where your dominant hand is over and your non-dominant hand is under. Uh, it doesn't have, I guess it doesn't have to be your dominant, but one is over, one is under. You can do double overhand with hook grip, which a lot of people do that. Um, a lot of times people do that just so they're hanging onto the bar. You, most commonly we see that with someone who has like a bicep injury. Um, so I have a friend who tore his bicep, so he can't do one under, right? Uh, so he does double overhand with hook grip, so that he can train heavy and still hang on to the bar.
because uh, me, I, it's something I need to work on, is double overhand. Um, when it gets heavy enough, I can't lift like 225, which is embarrassing. Like, don't be that person. <laughs> uh, um, trying to train double overhand and some of your warm-ups um, and even like you can use straps so that you're still strengthening that side. Um, I think whenever you are like, you see a lot of times I approach this massive 55 pounds, uh, or yeah, 55 pounds, and I was like, oh yeah, this is how I pick up 55 pounds. Um, try to train some warm-ups with double overhand. You don't have to hook grip. I find it painful on my thumbs, because I'm a bitch. <laughs> uh, any other questions or John you want to add? The person with the uh, asked the lockout because my lockout is terrible. Mm -hmm. um, uh, rock, rock pull has never transferred over to my lockout. And the reason being is uh, i rather, be, it's a very subtle difference, but I'd rather you do all blocks because the flex of the bar is going to be more similar since the weights are on something versus the pin mm -hmm. being on the bar. Uh, but the biggest thing is like just patient, having patience, you know, because a lot of times we're like, it gets starts to get hard and you're like, you ramp it, you hit it, whatever, like just be patient at the lockout. Keep training that position, keep training your glutes, keep training those positions. But I think Meg was saying, like, if you have a better start, sometimes you gotta sacrifice a little uh, floor speed off the floor and just actually stay in a better position. So a lot of times it's actually not your lockout, it's like you probably you might have a bad start too. So make sure your like your actual starting position is, is good too. Because a lot of times, like you may be like so strong off the floor, but if you're like really rounded, your hips are too high, your hips are too low, whatever, that's gonna make you know, whereas in a rack pull, you're already in this like perfect kind of optimal position. Exactly. It's not always going to like kind of tra transfer over. So, uh, but the one thing I wanted to, uh, so when, when I met you, uh, your deadlift did not look how it looks now. That's a compliment. So it's, <laughs> I'd say probably it's improved like the most out of all three te technically uh, from, I don't know, you just had some weird lockout stuff going on. So I just wanted to, you know, what are some things that you, you did personally to just kind of clean up? Because obviously you were still strong. But like, if you looked at like January 1st to whatever, it's almost December now, your deadlift looks way different. So what are some things that you like worked on personally to kind of clean up your form and kind of relearn like the pattern? Yeah, so uh, I was struggling at Nationals 2015, I was struggling with my lockout. So I pulled 386, but I pitched and I ramped it. Uh, so I, that's when we realized we need to strengthen my lockout. I need to strengthen, to, uh, increase some glute strength, especially because I couldn't open up my hips or I couldn't uh, cue myself. Oh, hips, open that, stand up. Um, so that lift, I attempted the same thing in a year, and like that progress doesn't seem like a lot it's, to me. It looks if you like took the weight out of the equation, you just like look, watch the video. Right. And you're, like 386, no, like and then three, you know, what you did in November, yeah. uh, October. It's like it's like it looks like a different person pulling. Yeah. Right. So same weight, uh, good lift this time. Uh, three whites, I think. Uh, yeah. Three reds, the three whites, so that's good. Um, and we really focused on some range of motion training. Uh, so we did pull from some blocks. I think, um, so your lifts, no matter what you do or how good you are, you're constantly gonna be changing things. So I think with that range of motion training, this is why I suggest bands. I think I started to get out of position a little bit um, and that's like was a smaller change that I needed to make and then I'm making after this year's nationals so now we're starting with higher hips so I went from one uh, one focus through an entire year I feel like now I'm stronger at my lockout um, and just a stronger person and now we're focusing on another technical thing that we and the change we made have always been really small so John actually has those little roadblocks that are you know under they're two inches and we have one minute, one minute. But you also have the max too that you can stack. So when we're changing our start position or doing block pulls, we might be adding a half, a half inch. Or <laughs> so it's, you're making these small incremental uh, improvements. And we also did lots of supplemental work. So we, we slowly changed our start position. We did lots of like sumo RDLs, changed the, the total amount of time we spent lifting, and really tried to hammer away at those weaknesses. So. Uh, no, yeah, the last thing I just think I just want to again is compliment to you. Like I think a lot of people get so like caught up with like hitting PRs like every minute and all this stuff, but like you know, like she like, on paper like her dental really didn't improve that much, but if you watch, watch so we call that like a quality of lift like PR. So it's like there's no like real change in the weight on the bar, but you're it's that's that's a win too. So like if you do if you move something better, you move something faster, you move something cleaner, that's progress too. I think we get like really caught up with like just you know, having sometimes these unrealistic expectations. So those small wins, like that's now like 
Now she's going to have the ability, her ceiling is going to be a lot higher because her technique is yeah. better. Now she can pull, you know, you just pulled 400 training. Now she can pull 425, 440 because now her, her movement's better. So her ceiling is going to be a lot higher than the technique that she used uh, last year. So to keep that in mind, and then the last uh, just piece I wanted to, uh, we talked about like your hips uh, like not being in the right position. So a cue I like to give my guys is like think about leg press off the floor and then hip extension. So once it gets to your knees, so leg press, hip extension, real simple like kind of cue. So you're driving your feet into the ground. So that's going to kind of get get you in the right spot. And then when we're in that hinge, you know, squeezing the glutes, driving the hips forward. And uh, that's could be if you're having trouble with the leg drive piece, that's a good like kind of mental kind of thing to focus on. All right.